this opening prayer that he is in the life changing business. Yes. Amen. 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 And if nothing else I've heard tonight, God is in the life changing business. There's a man right over here that has a testimony about God's life changing work. As he said, bless your socks on. But I'm going to share with you something tonight that probably nobody even knows about me. But when I first come out of the military and I came home, the first job that I took was with Walmart for loss prevention. So my occupation was catching thieves. And you might think, well, that sounds like a really cool job. Well, I was law enforcement when I was in the Air Force, and yeah, it was. It seemed like a really cool job. It certainly had some challenges. Uh, I, uh, there was days where I got caught a little bit of everything under the sun. There was days that I got to chase people through the parking lot. <laughs> it seemed like a good job. But it was all well and good and fun and games until you catch somebody that you went to high school with. And then you're like, oh, no, I didn't see that. Please tell me I didn't see that. The first time, it really bothered me. The second time, it really bothered me. So, and it amazed me that after doing this job for a while, that you could almost sit, sit right there at the front door, and people would have a certain look about them when they came in the door. They would almost say, that's the person I need to follow. And I'm going somewhere with this, so bear with me. Bless the Lord. And there was times that there would be rings of, of these thieves, thieves that would work different stores. And I got to work different stores all over Kentucky and, and got to work with other people. And we would set up cameras and do things and, you know, to try to catch these certain things. I just have to run with this thing. I don't know what lane I'm in right now. It's just Jesus take the wheel kind of moment. Because I, I really struggled with this one, but I swear there's got to be something in this. Bless the Lord. So we set up these cameras, and you catch people doing things, and and you catch them as they come out the door because legally you couldn't do anything to them while they're still inside the store but as soon as they step outside the door they then become a thief once they step outside so you confront these people and you would say we're going to go back inside and, and, and then you know the confrontation begins and, and then you would go in and you would say you know what I'm going to leave this decision to the store manager and let them do what they want to do with you. I know what they're going to do. They're going to call the cops immediately. There was a zero tolerance policy for this. Okay? And that's why it made it so hard to confront somebody that I went to school with that I knew. <coughs> because I had to abide by that. So when you take somebody in there and they're telling you, I didn't do that. I don't have that. You can't prove I did anything. I don't have nothing in my purse. I called a lady one time. Oh, let me, I, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I didn't know that a woman could speak like this. Come on. Turns out she was a doctor's wife. Uh -huh. But, I mean, I was threatened with lawsuit, court, I mean, you know, everything in the world. And I said, okay, all right, all right. I said, I'll see what we can do about this. 
So I go to the other room and I come back in. And I said, this was a VHS days now, I remember. I'll be right there, 1993. I said, right here. Right here it is. Come on. Come on. I said, do you really want to dispute this now? I said, do you really want to go there? What have we got today tonight? I said, what is in your, what's in your purse? I said, I know you got the makeup. So she just dumps it all out. I said, okay, you see, you're guilty. To make a long story short, the police did get called. And I never heard anything else out of it again. And that was kind of the beauty of it. That was the end of the road for me and them, and I just hope I never run into them again. <laughs> but what made me think about what it, what's, what's really on my mind tonight is that we're no different. That's right. We're guilty. We are. It's recorded. Right. It's all right there. Amen. Come on. I didn't have the power to take that tape and erase it, put it back in the drawer, and forget that it didn't happen. Come on. I had to follow my job. But tonight, to sum this all up, we are guilty. Yes. It's recorded. Yes. It is known. And there's only one that can erase that tape. Amen. 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 That's right. There is only one person that can take that away Come on. and free you from that guilt. Amen. Now, sure. You might pay for it in this life, in courts, jail time, whatever. There are many testimonies here that can testify to that. But the freedom that comes from sin, there's only one yeah. that can take that away yeah. and remove yeah. that from you. Yeah. Believe that tonight. Yeah. And if you think for some reason that that can't happen to you because maybe you did something, that was just too atrocious that it can't be forgiven. There's testimonies all around this room that will tell you different. He can take that tape and remove it and free you of all of that. And you'll be Amen. guilty no more. Amen. God bless you. Let's Thank all say
name of the, it was at the gospel bar. <coughs> business. 
I lost my life. I was sitting in prison. I was sitting in the jail, looking at about 40 or 50 years in prison. And uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Like I said, I'm a little bit nervous up here. Thank you, Lord. You're my friend, brother. Amen. I know that. The Lord's praying for me back there. And I said, this looks like a bunch of convicts up here. Amen. Yeah. When I first got out, man, they, you know, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, if you'll open the doors, I'll go ahead and speak anywhere you want me to. And first thing, it was a halfway house down there. I was like, man, all right, I can do this, you know, go over here. But uh, anyway, like I said, when I was, when, when I first started really messing up, man, I, I, of course, I was making a lot of dope. I was shooting dope. And uh, I had some buddies with me. And the house caught on fire. And I went back into God. And I got burned up real bad. My whole upper body got burned. And by that time, I'd already been to court trying to get custody of my kids and everything else, and I couldn't. And uh, I guess I could flip that trigger, you know. And, uh, and I don't blame it on nothing but me. I, I should have been man enough to stand up. That's just a simple fact. But uh, I started making a lot of dope anyway. This house caught on fire. And I went in and got a couple guys out as my partners. And I got burned all the way up. And like I said, I was on the run from the wall. We didn't have a little shootout. They was acting pretty hot. And so I just took off. And about two days later, a buddy of mine came up to me. He went to shine that flashlight in my eyes. He said, man, you're dying. I said, yeah, well, just throw me in a ditch. You see, that's what the drugs had done to me. They made me not care about absolutely nothing. I hated myself. I hated wow. what I'd become. Amen. I hated everybody that was around me. Wow. So anyway, he, he goes and gets a guy that works for the ambulance service, and they come in there, and they get to talking to me, and they get to mentioning my kids. And I have just enough sense to say, yeah, man, just send me to the hospital. So they drop a helicopter down there and fly me live, start her down there in Chattanooga. And I'm in the ICU unit. And they give me a 20% chance to live. I've been, where I've been cut open right here before in the bars and stuff, I, where I was so infected, it was just laid open with infection right here. And uh, there was two people, I remember there was two people in that burn center down there in Irvine. That was burnt. One of them was burned as bad as me, and one of them wasn't. And uh, they both died. And I remember the first time really getting scared. I really got scared. I see, God had a plan for me. Amen. Because there was a man that had, uh, he'd, uh, look here, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Come in, brother. And, uh, God had a plan for me. Uh, But uh, I'm going to tell about these people. This young man here. This is just is how the Lord works right here. This is so amazing right here. Like I said, I'm from Tennessee, and i got to get a pass to even come to Kentucky to come up here and speak. And uh, I come up with my brother, man. This, this guy right here has been such a godsend to me, and I met him in prison. The man that just came in camp, I met him in prison. And I'm up here visiting my brother, G. And Kevin just happens to call. Him. Just happens to call. Him. See, that's God. Yep. That's how God works. Amen. He knew we'd be together. And I think y'all might, might know about the prayer of intercession. You know, the Bible says the Lord looked for a man to stand in a gap, but he found none. Well, that's our call. That's our job is to stand in a gap for people, for everybody in here. Yep. Well, our brother calls, and he's asking for prayer. And I'm with a man of God right here to pray for this young lady, Del the young lady, Della Ray. And we get to minister to this lady on the phone and get to praying for her. And Lord, look at her now. She's up here. She's come to, to hear. To hear the Lord. <laughs> so when the God works, He knows all these things in advance. Amen. And that's exactly what I was getting ready to tell you. Because see, there was a guy that had worked for me, and his dad was a he was a he drunk a lot. Pool shark, always shot pool, always took care of us a little bit. You know, if we needed some money, hey, Ronnie, man, give me a picture of 100 or something like that. He's always gambling, always in the pool halls and stuff. It's damn I never had a dad. So Ronnie took me under his wing a little bit. Well, I get burned up. 
Ronnie got ready to become a preacher, become a man of God. He made a choice, and he'd give up everything cold turkey. Well, I'm laying up there at Burton Hospital, and Ronnie Maxwell shows up. Amen. And I'm in the ICU, you're burnt to a crisp, 20% chance to live. And they let him in the ICU unit. They're not supposed to do that. Ronnie comes in, he says, Spencer, he said, you're dying. He said, God sent me down here to pray for you, boy. And I got scared. I had tubes sewed in my legs, tubes in my arms, down my throat, my nose. I was wrapped up like a mummy. I crawled out of that bed and I got on the ground. I hit my knees and I started praying, Lord help me. Amen. And I want to tell you something. God laid his hand on me that day. And I felt I knew the presence of God had hit that hospital room in there. The man that was over the ICU unit, he come in there about eight, ten days later, and he said, I want to tell you something, Cone. He said, I've worked in here 28 years, and he said, I've never seen anybody heal as fast as you. And I knew God laid his hand on me. Amen. Right, I knew it with all my heart. I think that was in 2000, 2001, something like that. So they finally, they shut me out of there and put me in a, in a private room. And a buddy of mine shows up. He comes up to visit me. And I said, you come take me home. I knew the cops was coming soon. He said, I said, you come to take me home? He said, no. And I said, yeah, you did. And I walked out of there with the hospital gown on. I went to pulling tubes out, cutting them off. I took off. But I knew God had healed me. So when I get out, I get me a Bible. But you see, I'm on the run from the law. And I get me a Bible, and I'm reading it. And these guys are like, hey, man, you help me do this, help me do that. And I'm like, listen, don't look at me, man. I'm burning up. I'm about to die. But that pull, you see, I, I, didn't, I didn't just separate myself. The Bible says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Amen. I didn't know that yet. I wasn't grounded and rooted. I, I knew none of that. I just knew God had called on my life. He touched me. But I still had a long journey ahead of me. So anyway, I'm hanging out with everybody that I shouldn't be. I'm in the wrong places. And uh, about six months later, I'm right back in it. And the whole time I'm telling them, man, God healed me, and I'm trying to read the Bible. I'm getting this word in me, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Come on, man, do this. See, I hadn't made that choice yet. I hadn't made that choice. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I wasn't man enough to do it yet. Wow. I was still a coward. Great. So anyway, I get healed up good. So I think. And I'm right back at it, boy. And I mean wide open, son. And uh, they cornered me up here at this one place. We had a little shootout and I get away. They cornered me up here at another place. Oh, we're at it again and I get away. And they've done been calling my mama, hey, we're going to kill him. Please don't turn himself in. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So I'm beefing with them. And uh, Anyway, they hit me up here at this store. I've got a bomb on me. I've got that old cord. i got blasted caps. i got a 44, 357. And I'm ready to kill him. I don't care if I die. I'm ready to hit the battery. Just whatever. And they ended up, they shot me. They blowed that hand off. Shot me in the head three times, blowed me to pieces. <laughs> they didn't kill me. See, like I said, God had a plan for me. Amen. And I didn't know it. Amen. And at the time, I didn't care. I was full of anger, full of hatred. This had been going on for a couple years. And uh, so they get me, they send me, they fly me last hour to Knoxville up there. And uh, I get out, they said, shoot me to the infirmary down there in Blount County. And uh, anyway, like I said, they, they, they send me to a, the town that I'm from, Madisonville, after Blount County. And they start racking these charges up. And like I said, a bunch of convicts in here, most of y'all know what they're doing. They're, they're trying to put me away the rest of my life. And they hit me with 19 federal charges. Uh, it's like 12 state charges, aggravated assault on officers. And a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. So I stayed there for a little bit. And they shoved me back to Blount County. 
And I know the feds has got me. I know the feds has hit me hard. That's what I got. I realized that. Anyway, they put me in an isolation cell. And, uh, because I just couldn't be around anybody. I just, every time they, if they put me in a hole, you got to sell it in the hole. But you don't in isolation. There were six cells back there. We was all back there from other. And uh, you see, that's it, it, the, 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 the hatred I had. You know, I, I meet these brothers right here now, but the hatred I had for the, these officers, man, it was just, it was just unbearable because of some of the stuff they done. You know, and like I said, I was guilty of everything, but money that sure helped out. And uh, so I'm sitting in there, and like I said, if y'all been locked up, you know what? They Amen. stick that tray through that pie hole. They want it back, don't they? Amen. They want it back, and they're coming in to get it. So this went on for a long time. And uh, I guess they got tired of it one day, and they shoved the Bible through that pie hole. They said, here, come chew on this. So I start reading that Bible. I come across Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found if you saith the Lord. I said, let me tell you something. I said, here's the way it is. And imagine you're talking to God like that, right? I said, here's the way it is, Lord. I said, you show yourself to me. You show me you're real. I said, I've grown up believing in you. I believe in Jesus. All this other stuff. I said, but do I really? Do I really believe? I mean, let's ask yourself. I said, I'll tell you what. You show yourself to me. And I said, I'll serve you the rest of my life. I said, but Lord, I'll tell you what. If you don't, it's going to be bad. Probably for me and a lot of other people. Because I just don't care. But like I said, I've done three years in that isolation cell. Reading this Bible. And I started coming across the verses like Jeremiah 31, 28. Just as I've watched over you to pluck up, to tear down, to destroy, and to afflict, so have I watched over you to plant and rebuild, says the Lord. Amen. I knew God had to tear down what I thought I was. Come on. Come on. He had to destroy everything about me to, put, to turn me into the man of God that he created me to be. Amen. Because see, that's what he did. He created every one of us as men and women of God. From the foundation of the world, your name's Cat Called. Yeah. From the yeah. foundation of the world. That's a mighty thing, though, Ray. Believe me, he loves you, girl. I promise you. Amen. That song, Reckless Love, well, see, that's the way it was. I just got done giving them my testimony last Sunday at a revival in Madisonville. And this girl comes up to me and she said, Do you remember me? And I said, No. She said, We got baptized together. When I was just a kid. And see, God had always watched over me that time because he tore my heart out when I was a little kid. But I went astray. I went down the wrong path. I made the wrong choices. I didn't choose him. Amen. But I'll tell you what, in that prison cell, with every charge you can imagine, Bless you, Lord. every charge you can imagine, God found me in there at my lowest point. Yes. Amen. When I didn't care about absolutely nothing. Amen. He still loved me. Yeah. Amen. And I asked him one day, and I said, let me ask you something, God. I said, how can you still love me? Amen. I said, you know what I've done. You know what I've done. Come on. Let's give me the verse, Ezekiel 36, 26. It says, a new spirit will I put within you, and a new heart will I give you. I'll take out your stony heart, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Yeah. Amen. And you see, I made a choice in there. And I told him, I said, Lord, I'll serve you the rest of my life. I'll choose, I choose you, Lord. And every day on the way up here, I go down the road. I said, Lord, I choose you today. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I've got guys that work for me now, and they're back dabbling in whatever. I go pick them up. They ain't got drivers up, they ain't got nothing. I go in, they just all this riff right around. Lord, I choose you. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first day I got out of prison, I went and seen a buddy of mine that I was in state prison with that had worked for me. I walked in his house and said, I don't care to go in anywhere. It, it don't bother me. I walk in. He's laying there. He's just sitting there in the chair. Got the blood still dripping down his arm. Riggs laying there. Her was laying there. I said, Bragar, you know who I am? See, nobody thought they'd see me again. I had a death sentence. But 
buddy, I come in here and I got to tell him about Jesus Christ now. Because you Amen. see, I made a choice. Yep. I made a choice in that prison cell. Come on. And you're around it every day. Most of you is in here. If you're in Celebrate Recovery, you're still out there around stuff. Yep. But you got to ask yourself, man, what choice are you going to make? Right. I choose Jesus Christ. Amen. Every day Amen. I go down the road, I choose you, Lord. Yep. I choose you. Yep. He didn't say he was going to use you, but he did say he'd stick with you. That's right. You know, one of my favorite verses is Isaiah 43. When you go through the waters, I will yeah. be with you. Yeah. When you go through the floods, they will not overtake you. When you go through the fire, you will not be burnt. Neither will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord thy God, they say. Amen. The Holy One of Israel. And I have nations as a ransom for you. That's what it says. I have nations as a ransom for you. And what if you don't think you want to make that ransom for you? Right. You know, I didn't get to watch uh, uh, the Passion. Because it was too violent in prison. Oh, you can't watch that. It's rated R. It's violent. Remember, Kevin? They wouldn't let us get it, would they? I've never seen it. I went to prison in 2003. In 2003, I went to prison. So I, never, I watched that passion. And you talk about ripping your heart out. Man. Yeah. To know what he, I mean, you read it. Yeah. His vision was marred. Yeah, no man could, under, could, could look upon him. No man could look upon him. His vision was marred. He was beaten to death. Yeah. For me. For you. For every one of us. Mm -hmm. So I asked myself, I said, you know what, Spencer? If I know this, if I know this truth right here with all my heart, and I don't follow through with it, I'm a coward, ain't I? And I'm going to tell you something, that's something I ain't. I'm not. I was at one time because I wouldn't follow this. But I'm not going to be that anymore. I make a choice to serve Jesus Christ every day. I'll get up here and talk to you as nervous as I am, like our brother was up here a while ago. You know, I, I'm not no speaker, but God will enable you to give your testimony to people. Amen. Because of what you've been through. Each one of us has somebody that we have to reach. Each one of us. And if you make that choice to serve Jesus Christ, you can reach those. If, if you don't, the Bible says he calls you to be a watchman. He calls you to be a watchman. He says if you see the enemy coming and you don't sound the trumpet, their blood's on your hand. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That ain't what I say. That's what the God's Word says. You're called to be a watchman, each and every one of us. So anyway, like I said, I, 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 got, I got a 40-year prison sentence. And uh, I had to go to state prison first. I had five in the state. And then uh, the marshals picked me up at the state prison and sent me to USP Lee up here. And, uh, you know, it's people in and, and when I tell you it's a different world, it's a different world in there. Because I tell you, you got people from California to Boston, New York, Louisiana, Texas, Florida, D.C. But you got everything in there, and it's a melting pot. And it's a different world. Especially for home country, boy, they ain't never been to prison before. Except for that little five in Tennessee. So anyway, like I said, people was coming up to me. Uh, that's what I was getting at a while ago. The same guy, when I got out of prison, the guy that I went and seen said he was in prison with me in state prison. He worked for me, radar. Well, he's waiting on me in state prison. As soon as I hit the yard in there, man, all these dudes roll up. Hey, God, where you been, man? We've been waiting on you. They hold their hand out. What do you want to do? See, I made a choice. I made a choice to serve Jesus Christ. And I'm still early in my walk, but I made that choice. They had rigs. They had meth. They had coke. They had pills. They had everything you can imagine. I said, man, what do you want to do, dog? I know you got that 40 years ago. Said, no, man, I made a promise to God. I'm going to do another drug again as long as I live, man. I made a promise to God. Amen. And I'm never doing it again. Amen. I said, hey, that's cool. That's cool. We respect that. See, when you choose to serve the kingdom, you get that right. You get that right. When you stand up for what you believe in, God says, I got your re rear reward. You're back. He said, I got you back. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll lift up a standard again. Yeah. You know Amen. what that standard is? That standard is, a, it, I, I looked that up. That's a flag 
that they stand up like if you put that American flag the Marines did in Iwo Jima, yeah. everybody fights around it. When you put that standard up, the Spirit of the Lord puts that standard, He's calling all the angels down on you. Yeah, that's right. And buddy, they're surrounding you. That's right. And buddy, I tell you, it just took one to, what, kill 185,000. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, when you got God fighting for you, who can be against you? Praise yeah. God. Amen. 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 That's right. Lift that standard up. Yeah. Praise God for Jesus Christ. So I got, you know, and everybody respected that. I've done five years, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell you this too. And I usually don't tell this at the churches, but like I said, I got a bunch of convicts in here. I can tell you. <laughs> uh, when they shot me up there, and like I said, I had dope, I had guns, I had everything on me. But they put 14 grams of dope on me. So they wanted me dead. I was beefing with them cops bad up there, and they wanted me dead. If they couldn't kill me, they was gonna put me away the rest of my life. I planted 14 grams of dope and a pistol under my seat. Right? And I'm getting to the point of this. I, like I said, I usually don't tell this. As soon as I get to state prison, or put me in a four-man cell right off the bat, I'm in there about a week. There's three of us in there, and another guy comes in. Guess who he is? A dirty cop. Man. And I'm thinking, kill this dude. <laughs> Literally, I am. And boy, you talk about me getting smacked up by the head, son. I just spent three years in isolation reading God's Word. And it was that easy. See, he knows, he knows my anger. He knows that weakness. And man, he beat me down, boy. And did he just condemned me. He said, how can you forgive a man that's not done nothing to you and allow me to forgive you? And I sat and cried and cried. And I started witnessing to this man and prayed with him, and he became my best friend in there. I had his back in that whole thing. I tell you what, I watched him get saved in there. Amen. I watched him get saved in right, that cell. And I never knew what happened to him. I never knew what happened to him. Until about 12 years later, he done got out of prison. That man had gone out and became a preacher. Great right, Lord. Yeah. 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 And it's, like, it's not my it's not But that's God's mercy and grace of what He does. Yes. How can I forgive somebody? You know? But that's that forgiveness, man. If, any, if you're holding a grudge against anybody and you suspect to be forgiven, honey, you better drop it. I don't care what they've done to you. Right. It yeah. don't matter. That's right. That's right. But that's, a, that's a terrible thing. And, and believe me, I had a lot of it. And I can tell you two or three more stories when I hit Lee County up there about people that showed up. Because like I said, I had a lot of, a lot of people rolled on me. But buddy, I tell you, when you can act in forgiveness, God knows what you're, what's the Bible says? It says, it says uh, lay aside every weight and thus sin that does so easily yeah. beset you. Uh, yeah. And run with patience the race that is set before you. Yeah. You've got to get rid of that. Each one of you know which one it is. Amen. You know what's hitting you. Amen. And buddy, you better get shed of it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That forgiveness, buddy, I'm telling you. You, you, you. It'll eat you up. It'll eat you up. So anyway, like I said, after that, I, I go to federal prison. I go to here at USB Lee. And uh, same thing. You know, I started hanging with lifers. I get to Manchester and hang with lifers. <laughs> you know, that's... You don't want to hang with nobody that's going home. When you see people going home all the time, you don't, I mean, you don't, much as you, you know, I, I'm serving God, but still, man, I'm doing a life sentence, man. I, 2042, I'll be 78 years old. I don't want to ring around people that's going home as much as you want. You want to share the gospel with them and you want to do this, but you want to keep them at bay. You know what I'm saying? But see, the Lord don't work like that, does it? Yeah. Because each person has got somebody that they got a witness to. And buddy, I tell you, God never failed to put a man of God in my path. Never. Never. When I was at Lee County, he put men of God in my path that would, would witness to me, that would share the gospel with me, that had my back, regardless of the situation. We knew that Jesus Christ was the an answer, and we stayed strong on that foundation. That's all there is. And like I said, that's, that's what this Celebrate Recovery is, man. It's about making choices. 
Amen. It's about making a choice and sticking with it. And buddy, 18 years ago, I made a choice in an isolation cell to serve Jesus Christ. And here it was five, seven, eight, ten years later. And I stayed faithful to that choice. They were rolling up with me once again with every kind of drug you can imagine. Oh, you ain't ever going home, man. Why don't you just do one? Oh, man, I'm cool. Get your feet. I don't need that. I got what I need right here. Amen. Every day we go to the prayer circle. See, I surrounded myself by people I know who are servants of God. Amen. People who were grounded and rooted or were working on getting grounded and rooted. Iron sharpens iron. That's right, yeah. Amen. But I, I still had friends out there, but I knew, hey, man, I don't need that, dog. I, I got to get away from that. Amen. And that's the same with each one of us. Even today, man, now that I'm a free man, I got people rolling up on me, man, that I mean, grew up with. Like, man, that was changed. Yeah, I have. I have. I serve the king now. Amen. You boys want to hear what I got to say? Amen. That's cool. If you don't, I'll see you. Because I'm not going to be part of that. Or you want to break that wild turkey out and shake it up here? That was my drink. No, I'm cool. I'm not going to be tempted by that. And I'm going to nip it in the bud right then. Hey, whoosh. not around me, man. Kick rocks. Yeah, kick rocks. <laughs> And that's what you got to do, man. I see Amen. you stand strong on it. Amen. You can't run around and flirt with the enemy. Right. You, can't, you can't patronize and do that. That's right, that's right Bella Ray. You've got to tell them no. When they come around you like that, girl, beat your feet, man. I don't want to be around that no more. I choose to serve the king. Amen. Amen. Because you see, a lot of people think that they're going to miss out on something. Mm -hmm. they go, oh, man, I was getting high. I was doing this. I doing but I'll tell you what. I don't know what kind of drugs you did. I was a mad man. And I was that guy that he, I wasn't the dude that was peeking out the window. I was the dude somebody said, hey man, I think somebody's out there. I'm blowing out there with a pistol trying to find him. I didn't have no peace. I didn't have no comfort. It wasn't fun. It wasn't nothing in that life that led me to nothing but death. It destroyed my life. It took my life from me. It took my family, my business. It took everything from me. But then when I turned around and started serving Jesus Christ, God restored all that. Amen. He restored everything that I had My daughters are back in my life. They're not doing exactly like they should, but hey, I've been gone all their life. Amen. My son, he's in jail right now, but he's in there reading the Bible. Amen. I've got a daughter now that I didn't know that I had. I've got grandkids now that are part of their life every day. I've got my business back. Amen. And the thing is, the police department in Madisonville now has got me doing work for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they come up to me, and they're like, man, we're glad to see you doing good. See, I was the one that caused the friction. Yeah, they were there to protect me and help me. I was the one that did all that. Yeah. <laughs> they were doing that to protect everybody else from me. But I couldn't see that. But anyway, like I said, I, I'm at USD Lee. My points finally, we, we, we got prayer groups going on, man, and, and just just serving God. That's all we're doing. And finally, I get about seven years in at Lee County, and uh, I get to Manchester. And I meet these two men of God right here and other men of God. And you see, God always has people in, in your path waiting on you. And uh, me and Jeep, we were sellers for a while. And we'd sit, we'd pray, we'd fellowship, we'd read the Bible. We'd walk the yard. Kevin worked in the, the chapel up there. We'd go up there, we'd, have, we'd watch movies and stuff. And the drugs were there. It was, wasn't they? Boys, I'm telling you, they was everything you can imagine. Right? Dudes falling out every day. And you can still make that choice. Hey, you know what, man? I ain't never going home. Man, let me try that. Or you can stand up and say, hey, man, I'm cool. Amen. I'm good. Amen. Because you got that peace in your heart. You got that comfort. Because I guarantee when you do something, when you fall back on that, oh, you're going to feel bad. That condemnation is going to hit you and it's going to eat your life. Yeah. It's going to eat your life. But. Uh, you know, we got Bible studies going on, and God shows his children favor, didn't he? I mean, he showed us favor up there like you couldn't believe. Even in the prisons. Because when I tell you God ain't intimidated by the razor wire, the gun towers, come on, come on, man. The, the walls, the fences, 
Yeah. Yeah. He's right down in that presence. That, that song, Reckless Love, I'm going to tell you, he'll run you down. Yeah. Yeah. He'll run you down. I don't care where you're at. But it's like we was talking, Del Ray. The Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open that door, I'll come in with him. He's not going to kick it down. You see, I was waiting for him to kick that door down when I was in that isolation cell. But finally, when I got down on my knees and I said, God, I can't do this. Amen. I can't do it no more. Amen. That's when, that's when he took over. Amen. And he said, that's all I want, son. That's all I want. True. And buddy, when you surrender and draw nine to him, he'll draw nine to you. Amen. Because that's what his word says. And I want to tell you something. As you read this, if you... You can read this all day long, but if you don't apply it to your life, it's going to do nothing at all. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's going to do absolutely nothing. I know people that know this Bible with their mind inside and out, and they'll sit and try to argue with you because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't have this Bible in their heart. When you start reading this, and you put into action God's Word, He tells you in Isaiah, He says, put me in remembrance now. Produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reason." I said, God, why do I got to put you in remembrance? I said, you're God. You know everything. And then you get to reading about places like Jehoshaphat in chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles. Jehoshaphat done good and right what was in the eyes of the Lord. But those armies still came against him. Three armies came against him. More than he could handle. And he put God in remembrance of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Is this not the land that you gave us, Lord? Did you not say when we prayed towards your city and seek your face and humble ourselves and pray that you would help us, Lord? Did you not say this? See, that's all God was waiting for. Come on, boy. Come on now, tell me. Because he had that relationship with him. And when you build that relationship with him through reading his word, through praying... Then you can start talking to it. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice, and the stranger they will not follow. I remember at Lee County up there, and I'm sure it probably required the same way, way up in the mountain up there. And you'd see them dudes running around with their radio. This was 2000, what, I left in 13, probably 8, 9, 10, running right around in there, you know. They had them satellite radios. And they'd be, and you'd see them out on the yard, and they're leaning around. And then you see somebody stuck like this, right? like, what's going on? But see, they had to get in an uncomfortable position to get reception. Yeah, come on. And sometimes God has to make us uncomfortable right. to get that reception from Amen. Him. Just like we did here, just like we probably did here. And once I got uncomfortable and got down where I could hear that reception, come God on. started speaking to me. Yeah. And when you start hearing from the Lord and building that relationship with Him, and I'm going to give you an instance right here and, and, and show you just how much He cares for you. We was at USP Lee. And I've been outside. We've done a lot of burpees, man. We knock out 500 burpees every other day. And just, I mean, going at it. It's all you do in there. I come in. It's in the middle of August, man. And it's just hot, sweating, man. I walk in. And I think, man, I'm going to fix me a bowl of beans, macro or something. And I go to the microwave. And I, is that you? All I heard was take a shower. And I thought, man. I, and I stopped. And I said, you know what, Lord? I said, in faith. I'm going to go take a shower. Man, I put that bowl down. I went and got in the shower. I'm in there scrubbing up. Locked down, locked down. Man, we're locked down for two and a half months, man. I thought, God, you cared enough about me, man, to let me take a shower. You tell me you know the hairs of my head are numbered. And that, I mean, that just shows it, man. I wanted that shower bad. I didn't want to shower in the sink. Man, when I tell you he loves you and he wants to have a, a conversation and talk to you, he will. Amen. He'll meet you in the prison cell. He'll meet you Amen. In, the, in the bathroom, anywhere you want to go, in your car. Amen. Amen. Man, when I tell you he loves you, you have no idea. You have no idea. Like I said, anyway, I get to Manchester and I meet some great men of God and we're praying, we're having, you know, just fellowshipping, living my life out. And uh, this brother here, we start, uh, we start filing motions and stuff like that. I always wanted to go home, but like I said, I had some pretty bad charges. And uh, never did think that I really would. 
But you see, God had given me a word, and I had written it down in the book of uh, Habakkuk. The Bible says, write the vision down that you may run to read it. So I had a little tablet, and every time I'd have a dream or something like that that I felt the Lord was speaking to me, I'd write it down. Well, the Lord had given me a verse in Psalms 105, I think it's 18 or 20, and it says, and they put his feet in feathers. And they, they had him in prison until the word of the Lord came and tried him. And then the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and set him free. See, the Lord had given me that verse years ago. And I wrote it down. And as sometimes I lose hope, I, I could look back and I could read that. But man, God gave me a word. God gave me a word. Because it was a promise to me. He says, my word will not return to me, but it will do the thing that I send it to prosper. That's what God said. And you hold God accountable for his word. And I tell him, I said, God, if you said this, and you don't hold true with it, you'd cease to be God. And I know that ain't going to happen. Yeah. The Bible says, God's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of a man that he should repent. And, I, and Jeremiah says, I hasten over my word to perform it. As you take your time, and, and like I said, me and Brother Jeep talk about it all the time. We had a luxury as much as weird as it sounds to sit and read this Bible. In isolation, I, I quit counting after 20, and that was in three years. And it was just over and over and over. Because see, this is what I grabbed a hold of. This is all I cared about at the time. This was the hope that I had. This is the only hope I had. Bless you. I tell you, that hope won't let you down. Amen. Amen. That hope won't let you down. You look around, we, we sit up on the balcony, man, and you look around, especially at them pens, and you see people walking around with two life sentences or three, and you guys know what I'm talking about, and they're walking around every day with that lights out. And buddy, you better recognize it, hadn't you? You better recognize that they've lost all hope. they got no hope. See, I was that man at one time. I was running around with no hope. I lost everything until I got this. And when I got this, I found something that could that could reach and touch me, that could heal my heart. But anyway, I got to, uh, like I said, I got to Manchester. And we started filing motions. The GP helped me. He's, he's, when it comes to that legal work, man, his outdate was 2049, mine was 2042. We both had a death sentence. And he'd work on his stuff. And he tried to help me on mine. And I'll tell you, I don't know nothing about that stuff at all. He'd help me like, oh. But But uh, he ended up, got to, uh, his, he wasn't ever supposed to go to low, but he did. And uh, he kept in touch with Becky the whole time, working on trying to get me out. Finally, I hear that he's out. And it just it was just amazing. I was like, praise God. And it sparked that hope in me. Like, man, Lord, if you can let him out, you can let me out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can let me out. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So I'm praying when COVID hits. And man, when that COVID hit, man, they locked us down. We get out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, ten minutes for a shower, and that was it. 18 months, I guess, wasn't it? At least 18 months, right off the rip. And, uh, and that was tough. That was tough. But once again, it gave me time to read and pray and just get on my face. I get up at 5 o'clock every morning, man, and I read and read and read and pray. And just, it's the only thing that can keep you calm. It's the only comfort you get. So, uh, Lord, give me a verse. Psalms 40. It says, uh, get this right. Give me Psalms 40 right off the bat. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me. He inclined unto me, and He heard me, and He lifted me out of a pit, out of the miry clay, out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. 
And it says, and I put a new song in his mouth. Yeah. Even praise unto our God. Yeah. And many people shall hear it and fear and trust in the Lord. And I was like, man. And I knew it because it, it was like, Lord, you're telling me you heard me. It, it just spoke to me as plain as day. The Lord said, I heard you. It's 18 years I've been in now. 18 years. So I get to ask him. Like I said, I got it wrote down in my tablet up there. And I get to ask him. I said, Lord, I know why he's supposed to ask for a sign. I said, would you? Lord, just show me something, please. Show me something. And I promise you, I looked out the window a couple days later and seen the end of a rainbow sitting there. I never believed it. I just, and I wrote it down. I've got it on paper. And it just, it, that hope just jumped in me. And every morning I'm praying and I'm reading and I'm praying. The Jeep's already out. He's sending stuff to Becky. They're, they're working on this motion. I'm in a cell trying to write them. I can't write them. <laughs> Nothing, Kevin. <damage. laughs> it looked like chicken scratch. I don't know how the judge wrote it or read it. And like I said, I had some pretty bad charges. So, uh, I'm praying and I'm talking to the Lord. And then he gives me Micah. Micah 7 and 8. Let me see if I can. I just want to get it right. And uh, he says, uh, Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait upon the God of my salvation and he will hear me. See, he reconfirmed what he done told me. I will hear you. I will hear you. It says, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be alive unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, for I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. And I knew it. I just, I knew it in my heart that I was going home. That's all I had. That's all I had to do. I knew it. My outdate's 2042, but I'm already talking like I'm going home. And I filed a motion. COVID breaks a little bit. We're getting to go to Unicorn part-time and stuff like that. And I'm getting ready to go get on the phone. As I pick up the phone, my counselor comes out and says, Come, let's go back here in the back. I said, man, I'm getting ready to get on. He said, let's go right now. And I knew it. I looked at him and I said, the judge answered my motion, didn't he? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Get back here. I said, man, that judge answered my motion. And I'm just shaking. He called me back in the back. They handed me a piece of paper. You got to understand. Amen. This paper says time served. Amen. It didn't say ankle monitor. It didn't say nothing else. It said time served. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. If you're ready to serve, you make that choice. If you're standing there, I promise you, he's going to be obedient. Your act of obedience. But you don't know what the outcome will do when you decide to make a choice to serve Jesus Christ. 18 years I had to do, but I did it serving Him. Amen. And buddy, that's what it took. You see, the Bible says in the book of Job, it says, He's before me and I don't know it. He's behind me and I can't perceive it. He's working on the right hand and I don't know it. On the left and you can't see him. It says, but when He has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. That's what the Bible says. When He's tried you, you'll come forth as gold. But I ask you, sir, What's that gold got to go through? It's got to come out of the mountain. It's got to be crushed. It's got to be melted. Then it's got to be melted and stamped. Right. you got to go through the fire sometimes, man. Yep. And that's what I'm sure a lot of you have been. But if you make that choice, if you make that choice today and say, Lord, I choose you. I choose you. I'm never going back again. I promise you, you'll see the fruit of it. Amen. You might got a battle or two behind you or ahead of you. Amen. Just like I did. Yeah. I still had five times or two, a few other things. But I'll tell you what, the Lord Jesus Christ was with me the whole time. Amen. He never left me. He never forsook me. Amen. And I stand before you today a free man. Not only as a free man out here, but a free man right here. Amen. That happened 18 years ago in an isolation cell when I got on my knees and said, Lord, I choose you. I choose you. And I'm never going back. Amen. So when they put, they, they give me that paper, time served, first thing I did in that, in that office Stood up, raised my hands, and said, Lord Jesus Christ, I praise you. Amen. I magnify you. I worship you. I don't care who sees me giving and praising all Amen. Right. I'm not embarrassed by none of that. I wasn't embarrassed in prison, was I? We went out on the yard when everybody else was doing stuff, and we had Bible stuff. We didn't care. 
I want to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. Because guess what? He set me free from everything. If I walked with the devil for 36 years, for 36 years old, I went to prison. And believe me, I fought tough for him. I fought tough for that booger. Come on. Think of what I'm going to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The King has set me free. Amen. The King has set me free. I'm going to shout the Lord. They told me I had quarantined for 14 days. So they put me down there in the cell. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, what would you have me to do? I said, anything you want me to do, Lord, I'm yours. I'm your servant. I made a promise to you. I'm in covenant with you. You tell me what to do. And he led me to the parable where Jesus went across the lake into the Gardenians. And he says, when Jesus got out of the boat, said there was a man that lived among the dead men. It says, no man could tame him. He cut himself and he lived among the tombs. Jesus said, that was you. He said, that was you. He said, you was living among dead men. Nobody could tame you. Nobody could do nothing to you. It says, but when that man seen Jesus, he fell and worshipped him. He worshipped him. And a few minutes later, when he was clothed and in his right mind, he asked him, he said, Lord, let me go with you. And Jesus said, no. I want you to go back to where you come from. You tell them what good things the Lord has done for you. Amen. Amen. And that's why I tell you how powerful your testimony is. I'm a two and a half hour drive, three hour drive from here. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tell it. I'll go to New York if God opens the door up there. I'll go to Florida. I don't care where I is. If you make that choice today to serve the king, you've got a powerful testimony. Every one of us did. Amen. Every one of us did. And like I said, I, I got out, they, they turned me loose, and the uh, first place I had to go was to the halfway house. <laughs> I couldn't, you know, I still bug out to Walmart every now and then. But, uh, as you know, I, I never thought I was going home. But here I stand, a free man, because of what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm telling each and every one of you, you can stand a free man, a free woman today. Amen. For what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Amen. So, you guys, uh, come up and some music. I pretty much said what I got to say. Thank you, Lord. I'm here to tell you. Yeah. You know, the Bible says today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart like right. they did the day of provocation, where they tempted me in the wilderness for 40 days. And he says, My soul was not pleased with them, and many of them perished in the wilderness. Now these are the same people that seen the works of God, that watched the plagues, that were saved out of Egypt, saved out of bondage. They were delivered out of bondage, but they still didn't believe. They didn't make that choice. They murmured, they complained. They didn't make that choice to serve the king. But you can make that choice today. Come on. You can make that choice today. Today, if the Lord's calling you, harden not your heart like they did in the day of provocation. All you got to do, you can do it standing there. I did it in a prison cell. You can do it up here. Somebody can pray with you. Whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you, if the Lord's tugging on your heart, today's the day of salvation.